Hello, this is Mr. Finley, and this is a short video on the rehearsal process from the point of view of a director. As you know from our design unit, there is a usual chain of production uh, from when a producer decides they want to do a show uh, to the show finally opening. We're going to take a look at it from the point of view of the director. First, the producer hires the director for the show, and then, as you know, the director meets with designers at production meetings to talk about the look of the show, and then they go off and make their designs. While they're doing that, the director rehearses the show with the actors, figures out the staging or blocking, that's where people enter and exit, uh, motivations, all those things. Um, <clears throat> once the show has been rehearsed, the director brings all the elements together, the actors, the set, the lights, all those things, what we call technical rehearsals or tech rehearsals, and then after those, the show opens. So we're going to look at this chain of production in a little bit more detail. Regarding production meetings, as you know, during these meetings, the director meets with designers to determine the overall look of the show. That's one of the big jobs of the director, is to determine the look or style of the show. Is it really bright? Is it fast-paced? Is it slow and sad? Is there a lot of music? Is it totally realistic and silent? These are all choices that the director makes and then works with the designers to make those things happen. But the, the overall look, the overall feel is determined by the director. And as you know, sometimes a design metaphor is used to communicate that with the designers. A design metaphor is a non-literal image of some sort that can be used to describe how the play feels, uh, like a broken Ferris wheel or a melting ice cream cone, for example. It's not a literal image, it's a metaphor, but it lets us see how the play feels. The designers then provide documents like ground plans so the director can begin rehearsals. It's important the director has those things, especially ground plans, to figure out, okay, where is the set so I can figure out the staging. Um, the actual uh, rehearsals with the actors. Uh, before we can rehearse with the actors, we have to get the actors. So the director first casts the show. This is a really important step. According to some, casting is about 80% of the work of directing. If you get a great cast, um, you, the hardest part is done. Um, if you have a horrible cast, however, no matter how good a director you are, you probably won't have the best possible show. So choosing the right actors for the roles is a big, big part of directing. And that casting can happen close to the beginning of rehearsals, a week or two out, or it may be several months out. Uh, it depends on the show. But once the cast has been selected by the director, the actors do a read-through of the script. They get together, um, usually around a table, and they read through the script uh, so they know what the overall story is and begin to get some ideas about their characters and its flow. This is followed by an additional reading and discussion period called table work, because it's usually done sitting around a big table in the rehearsal space. And during this period, the script is read a few more times. Uh, the director discusses things with the actors, gets input, uh, figures out any questions, um, and then once this period is done, working rehearsals begin. Working rehearsals represent the biggest part of the rehearsal period, and it's during these rehearsals where the actors are up on their feet um, that the staging or blocking of a scene, that is where characters enter or exit, what sort of gestures they use, where all of that is figured out. To look at that more carefully, um, working rehearsals form the majority of rehearsals. And in each working rehearsal, a certain section of the script is worked with the actors using a three-part process. Um, so that section of the text may be, say, a five-page scene. It's never the whole big old play. It's always a section of the script. And it's worked in this way. First, the section to be worked is run without stopping. The actors get up and they run through the scene, all the lines, and there's no interruption. That's so you can see where you are on the scene, what problems exist, what needs to be fixed. That's the first section. In the second section, the director works through the scene with the actors, trying different things, giving direction. We sometimes call this the start-stop period, um, because <clears throat> the actors will start acting, the director will stop them, they'll fix some things, they'll try, maybe you want to enter from this door instead of that door, uh, maybe this character isn't angry, he's actually sad in the scene, so you try different things to try and make it uh, the best scene possible. That's the middle section, and that forms the bulk of the rehearsal period. And then finally, and this is quite important, the section is run again without stopping. And what this does is it cements the work in the actor's brain. 
Um, it's very tempting for the director, if they see the actors doing something they don't quite like, to try and stop them and interrupt them during this last section. You shouldn't do that, because then the, um, the work is never cemented in the actor's brain, and the next time they come back to this sequence, they'll have forgotten all the work you've done. If you let them run through it once without interrupting them at the end, um, they'll remember it much better the next time you come to that scene. Um, and so in working rehearsals, uh, you will stage and work through the various sections of the script until you get a big chunk of the script done. Once a large section of the play has been staged and worked, uh, time is taken to run that section. Um, that section could be an act, and usually an act is a large part of a script. Most modern plays have two acts with an intermission in between them. Older plays might have had three acts because they were longer. Shakespeare plays have five somewhat shorter acts. But an act is a big section of a play made up of smaller scenes. So um, once you've worked several scenes, maybe you run the whole act therein, or maybe you run the entire play. Uh, it's important that when you're running, you not be starting and stopping, but that you run through, and then you make those various fixes. Uh, toward the end of the rehearsal process, most of the time is spent in runs to let the actors feel the arc of the play. It's very important that the actors spend enough time just running through the whole play that they can figure out what scenes follow what. You don't want to be just working scenes and never actually running sections of the play. Finally, once the show is staged and solid, the cast moves into the theater because realize that most of the rehearsals don't take place in the theater itself. They usually take place in a rehearsal space, like a studio. And at that time, elements like costumes, props, sound, set, and lights are then added. Because we're adding technical elements, these are called tech rehearsals, or sometimes uh, uh, technical rehearsals, or tech rehearsals, which is short for that, or sometimes we just call it tech, because we all know what it means. Um, and this is the first time all those things are brought together. It's actually important to note that except for rehearsal props and some music, these elements are not brought into rehearsal before this time. Very often young actors are very eager to get on the set as soon as possible or to try on their costumes as soon as they can. But because these things tend to distract the actors, um, in a professional production process, they're not brought in until the very end um, during this technical rehearsal period. Um, and now, once the, those elements are brought in, the director's job suddenly becomes focused on bringing those technical elements together, meaning the show should be solid before tech rehearsals. Because as soon as you start worrying about lights and sound, uh, that's going to throw off the show. So you want to make sure the show is good and set and solid before technical rehearsals begin. Technical rehearsals can sometimes be challenging because you're dealing with a lot of different elements being added all at once. Um, but they can also be very rewarding because suddenly you get to see the final picture with light and costume and all those things that make the show beautiful and real. Um, this technical rehearsal process usually lasts about a week, sometimes two weeks on a very big show. Um, but as soon as it's over, the show opens. It's the last step to bring all those elements together before an audience comes in. And that's how you make a show.